Uh, so uh, my name is Qing Gexie from Georgia Tech. Today I'm going to talk about our work on building a domain top list. Now many of you here might have used domain top list before uh, in your study. So for those of you who have not used, domain top list basically provide a set of commonly used domain to investigate. Um, popular examples include Alexa, top one million, Cisco one million, and Tranco. There are actually not so many free lists available these days. And unfortunately, Alexa, the one that most of us are working on, has been recently retired, which gives even fewer lists we can use than before. So those li lists are super important that hundreds of prior studies actually rely on those top lists. There is an example, the su survey shows the widely use of top list at 2017's venue. And on the industry side, several security-related services also build on those top lists for their security offering. So despite how important those lists are, they are actually have several undesirable properties. First, their data source and ranking method actually remain opaque. We cannot really understand how those lists are constructed and several pile studies have identified ways to manipulate those top lists, entering their target domain to those top lists for uh, higher rankings. And those lists are also pretty unstable, especially for Alexa. So in our work, we consider about can we do better? Uh, we aim for build a new top list that with those desirable properties. By doing so, uh, we need to consider two components here. First, what data source can we use that can reflect domain usage? And second, how do we rank domains from this data source? So for the first component, our approach is to analyze domain usage by IP addresses through passive DNS data. Well, passive DNS data is the DNS traffic we collect from recursive resolvers PDNS is now known to be widely used in both academia and industry, making it a more transparent and accessible top list data source. And Umbrella also use PDNS for their top list construction. So PDNS can help us to better build a general ranking method for top list construction. So now we have this data source uh, for our second component, uh, our exploration drive our direction into a voting-based domain ranking method. Where the basic idea is first each IP address will express their individual domain preference. As shown in this figure, we will calculate our individual ranking for each IP address. And then we aggregate domain preference across all IP addresses through a voting scheme. Here, a voting scheme serves as a natural solution for such uh, preference aggregation because it combines uh, domain preference from multiple voters, where in our scenario, uh, from multiple IP address. So I will describe each step of this ranking method next. So for the first step, as I mentioned earlier, we will calculate individual uh, preference for each IP address, just as shown in the figure. And we consider two ranking metrics here for calculate a domain IP preference. First, we consider the request volume that reflects the address preference for a domain. And the second is active duration. The intuition that we consider active duration here is that uh, popular domains are constantly queried over time. So uh, by using active duration, we will rank domains higher that are regularly queried. Then we combine these two metrics to calculate individual IP's preference ranking. Uh, you can also check detail in our paper that how we uh, aggregate these two metrics. And then before aggregating this individual IP preference, let's consider another scenario here that uh, multiple client devices may reside behind address. So there is a question, uh, could we treat all those IP addresses the same? but it may unfairly represent the contribution of individual client's preference. So we will consider IP weighting here 
And the motivation behind here is to more realistically reflect IP characteristics. So we also consider two features for calculating IP weighting, uh, domain diversity and total request volume. As these two metrics both positively correlated with the client population behind the IP address. Again, we combine these two metrics uh, to calculate weighting for each IP address. So finally, uh, having established individual IP's preference, then we also consider IP weighting. Then we need a method that can aggregate those individual preference. As I mentioned earlier, we will use a voting scheme. So I will mainly focus on the border voting scheme in this talk, where each voters will rank the candidates in our scenario is domain, and a candidate receive one point for every other candidates ranked below it. And the domains are ranked in order by the sum of points across all IP address. So in our work, we also consider the truncated version of Boda, where each voter will rank a threshold number of candidates. Because uh, different IP addresses actually can request different number of domains. So a truncation help us to better balance the difference between IP address uh, in our paper, we also evaluate a different ranking method. So let's we have a brief recap here. So our ranking method, first, we determine the IP-specific domain preference, and then we consider applying IP address weighting. Finally, we vote across all IP address to produce the final global ranking. So we have this ranking method now. Uh, we have to evaluate, uh, evaluate in practice to see how well it works. So here is our evaluation part. Uh, we use uh, the data source from 114 DNS from China, which is the largest DNS services provider in Asia, and uh, using their large-scale passive DNS as input data set, we build, uh, using our ranking method, we build a top list for evaluate in practice. So as I already openly uh, described our ranking method as well as our data set, we argue that we already have construction transparency. So in this talk, I will mainly focus on uh, the rest of two properties, manipulation resistance and the ranking stability. So we will evaluate these two metrics across different list parameters, like we test IP weighting or not, the trade-off, and also test the different voting method, and also compare the list that construction by our method to existing list, like Alexa, Umbrella, and Tranco. Here is the first property, uh, manipulation resistance. So when we say top list manipulation, it basically means we manipulate the list to achieve high rankings for targeted domains. So now many websites actually offer top list manipulation as a paid service. For example, uh, this Alexa specialist website. And this is their ser service details. So it actually indicates that top list manipulation is not just a theoretical threat, but happen in practice. So it's very important for a top list to, ha uh, to be manipulation resistant. Then we manipulate Alexa, Umbrella, and Tranco to compare our performance with theirs. So the manipulation method, you can check the details in our paper. For Alexa, we can easily get into Alexa's about 2,000. And similar for Umbrella, we can easily get a ranking in Umbrella's uh, 2.8 thousand. For Tranco, uh, we use a daily version of Tranco that combines Umbrella and Alexa and can get a ranking around 2,000. So compare uh, those lists. Uh, our list using the same attack, our list can, uh, the, the attackers can only get about 20,000 ranking in our list. So our list actually to be more robust compared to those existing lists. Another important property is stability. 
Uh, here we quantify stability as a percentage of a top list for one day that remains on the list for the next day. In other words, it's the list intersection between two days. And stability is also very important. Uh, we think the majority of top list should not churn over a very short period of time. Otherwise, uh, using those top list will lead to a completely different measurement result. So here is the, our stability result of top 10,000 and top 1 million. For top 10,000, um, maybe the range that many of us are working on, we outperformed Umbrella, Tranco, and Alexa. And for top 1 million, our list outperforms Tranco and Alexa and is comparable with Umbrella. Even though Umbrella actually uses a two-day data window, uh, and our list is constructed using the daily snapshot of 114 DNS. So by far, uh, our list can get good uh, stability performance and manipulation performance. So I will mainly introduce the evaluation part by far. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, we, op we release our daily update top list at secrank.cn and also open source our list implementation. These two links are also in the paper. Maybe you can check later. And we also recognize that uh, our input data set may be Asia-centric. So it's good for those users uh, interested in study Asia-centric, as other, other top lists actually uh, more Western-centric. So just to wrap up today's talk, uh, today, I mainly described that how we develop a top list ranking method has those desirable properties, and this list can serve to the uh, security community that researchers can use our ranking method for similar ranking scenarios. And today, I didn't have uh, time to really talk about all the details in the paper. And in our paper, we actually systematically evaluate different top, li top list design decisions and provide insight into top list construction and top list usage. Uh, our work is truly an initial exploration of top list construction, so we also hope that our work can drive further investigation into this space. Thank you. I'll take any questions.